what up everybody it's your boy young fizz and welcome back to another tutorial we are back inside a machine and today we want to import midi data from the phantom x6 and then get that into machine and kind of work on the track from there all right so to do that it's very simple i've, I've already exported my midi uh data and saved it on my desktop so i'm just going to slide this over here and go ahead and drag the MIDI from the desktop right here into group one. All right. So that's the first step. The next step is you want to make sure your tempo is set right. My tempo did not copy over, so I got to set my tempo. So I'm just going to double click. And I know my tempo is 112 and it's set. Now, I wish I could say that we were done. It was that easy, but it's not because if we press play. You're not going to hear anything. So the next trick is routing. So now, if you've seen some of my other tutorials, I talked about routing audio. Well, today we're going to be routing MIDI and audio. So we got to say, we got to tell our data where to go and where the audio should be coming in at. All right. So to do that, we want to make sure that our setup is right. So let's go ahead and open our preferences. And your MIDI, so whatever MIDI that you're using, it should be selected here. So I'm going to be using the Phantom X, and that's pretty much it. Basically, the Phantom X. And then for audio, we're going to be using the Orion Studio, and I have my Phantom X connected to the uh, Orion Studio. So I'm going to show you guys about that when I get to that, uh, that later. All right, but for now, we're going to be routing the MIDI. So you have your data on the screen, and you got to tell your MIDI where to go. So you, you want to make sure you're, you're working off of the channel tab here. So you have your plugin highlighted and then you have your channel tab. So I'm about to say, hey, MIDI, go to my Phantom X6, right? So we're working with MIDI and we want to make sure we're on output because we're sending this uh, data to our Phantom. So make sure your output is selected here and then click MIDI. All right, so one through eight, I believe, is what I'm using here. So I'm just going to cycle through this real quick. And then you can see right here, channel one is routed to channel one, channel two, channel two. But channel three is routed to five, seven, five to eight, nine, ten, twelve, and that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, channel one, and then I'm going to select channel eight by holding down shift. And I'm going to select a destination. So that destination is going to be right here in my phantom. So I'm telling my, this data to go to my phantom. So I'm going to press play and we're still not going to hear anything. Probably wondering why we're not hearing anything. Let me tell you something. MIDI is not audio. MIDI is data. You're not going to hear, you're not going to ever hear MIDI. You can't hear MIDI. You're going to only hear audio. So we have to have that audio coming from somewhere. And this is where the routing comes into play at. So I'm going to basically to keep everything organized, get the audio into the machine. To do that, we want to go ahead and select track number 16. And this is just something I do for my personal preference. So I'm going to call this audio in. And then so we're going to go to the audio tab and we want to make sure we're on the input. So input, and then we're going to select three left, three R. Why are we selecting three left and three right? It's because that's where we have it in our preferences set up as. So everybody's interface is going to be different. But what you want to do is make sure you're on the input tab. Make sure your interface is, you know, you're, you have the right device. Make sure you're on your input tab. And then you want to look right here. So on three left, three right, I have my inputs coming in. So my phantom is connected to five and six on the Orion studio. So some from the output of the Roland phantom is coming out and going into five and six. All right. So that's why we select three left, three right, because that's where it's routed to or mapped to. All right. So I set my tempo and I have set up everything. So let's press play to see what happens. All right, so that's the beat. So the beat's playing, it sounds good, and I wish I could say that we're done, but I'd like to take it everything a little step further here. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to take everything a step further 
once you get it inside a machine because you know to really take advantage of the machine software you know you want to be able to to you know just do things rather quickly all right so we know our audio is coming in right here it's, it's all mapped it sounds good and so now we want to basically isolate the sounds you know a lot of people this is the old way of producing you know how we used to track out beats from you know into pro tools and we used to like press record so many times and you know have all the audio streaming track by track well we have to do this in machine as well and then at the end we can export it but for now i just want to show you guys how to isolate the kick drum so let's go ahead and name some of these tracks here so we're going to call this we're going to call this midi roads i'm going to capitalize everything Got my MIDI bass. Oops. All right. And I think that is just a string hit. Let's check it out. Yep, that's just a string hit at the end. And then we want to stay with our... Um, Stay in our order, so I, just, I like to call this MIDI so I know what the source is. And then here, MIDI guitar. MIDI down effects. All right. This is our MIDI strings. I'm just basically naming everything to keep everything nice and organized. So this is our MIDI drums. All right. And then this is our MIDI hat. And it's just a nice little groove there for the hook. All right. So now that we have everything named, we have our audio in. Everything is good. So let's go ahead and isolate the kick. Because we're not working in Logic Pro X today, and you know, Logic Pro X has a cool feature where you could basically isolate it in a click of a button, you can kind of do that in machine as well. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. So basically, it's like split D mix. Um, but there's really no shortcut for that. But basically, what you want to do is take this MIDI drum here. So I'm gonna highlight that because that's the one I'm working with, right? And just for my convenience, I'm going to change the color to this beautiful green color here. And I'm just going to make a copy. So I'm just going to take this copy and I'm just going to paste it on, let's say, 15 here. All right. So basically, we have a copy of what we just did. Now, this here is going to become the MIDI um, kick. And then this here is going to become the MIDI snare. And the only reason why I'm doing this is because I didn't isolate it inside the Phantom. I record on the same track, but I want to isolate it here. And that's the beauty of working with a computer because you can easily isolate, you know, the, the sounds here. So we're going to open this up and we're going to go ahead and go to our pattern editor here. And so we call this MIDI kick. So that means when we hear a snare, we're going to delete it. That's the snare. So it's going to be the top one. So we're going to get rid of that. And then we're going to go to our copy and do the same exact thing. But instead, we're going to get rid of our kick. And that's the bottom one. All right. There we go. And let's go ahead and drag that back up there. All right. So we have our MIDI kick and then we have our MIDI snare. That's better, right? Now, you're probably asking yourself, why doesn't he just leave it with MIDI? The reason being is because I want to be able to EQ this kick. So we want to be able to turn this MIDI data into audio because right now it's coming over as MIDI data. It's going out of going out here MIDI going inside the Phantom saying, hey, press my kick and snare drum and being out of the Phantom, coming back into my Orion studio, into the machine software saying, hey, 
I'll put this as audio, trigger this sound, you know, here's a kick, here's a snare. And now we want to convert this into audio. So to do so, we're going to go ahead and use the eternal record uh, feature. So I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to call this kick. And this is going to be the audio kick now. So I'm just going to go to my sample here, play it. Select where we want it to come in at. And then we just want to go ahead and do detect. Because all we need is just one little, um, well, just one little sample. That's all I need right there, right? So I'm going to go ahead and go to edit. And then basically we're going to zoom in here. And get as close as we can to edit the sample. So I'm doing this with precision. And that looks pretty good there. All right. And then we just want to kind of make sure this, drag this right here. Let's see that here. And then we want to truncate that. Some people like to normalize their samples. You can do that if you want to. I don't always do it, but let's just do it for this example here. And basically what normalizing does, it takes the audio and just puts it all the way to the zero level without clipping. So we're just going to play the sample and see how it sounds. So that sounds good. So now I have my kick sample. All right? Cool. All right, so now we want to take that kick and we want to put the data that's triggering machine on this kick sample. I know that sounded confusing, but let me explain. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to take that kick sample and use it in the machine as a sample. We're going to trigger that as a sample because machine, it uses MIDI to say, hey, play this kick drum in a sample and you can actually work with the audio inside a machine. All right, so to do that, before I go any further, I'm just going to name this Disco Kick. And I think I did this before, so I'm just going to call it Disco Kick 2 so it doesn't confuse anything. All right, so, all right, so this is called a Disco Kick. And that's how it sounds. All right, so let's go ahead and go back here. So I'm going to take this kick track here. We're going to highlight it. And then we're going to just going to simply drag it down here. You got to remember when I program this, it's playing down here. All right, so basically it's on C1. To correct that, what we want to do, go back to our sample editor and we're going to select the zone. So we want to make sure that we're on this highlighted track here and we're going to put this in a nice color so we know what we're working with. Uh, let's use it like a little fuchsia color or something, like a pink color. So, so in, inside the machine is saying this is the root note here. So we want to make sure this here is the root note. So now that the machine is triggering the sample, I can come over here to my plugins and add, say for example, we want to add some saturation to it and say we want to add some EQ to it. So we're going to add some internal EQ and I'm saying it's, it's lacking maybe like some 40 Hertz. And, um, you know, we want to beef it up just a little bit on the low end. So we're just going to knock it up maybe like three DB or so. I'm just holding down shift and that's going to make it fine tune. So right away, I'm already kind of mixing my track and producing my track inside of the machine software so it makes it a lot easier and then you just got to remember not to like engage this track because if you do it's going to sound doubled so that's why i have this track muted here or if you're completely done with it you can just simply delete it but i like to hang on to it just in case i have to go back and make some other edits but again 
your new um, track is right here. So really, you can delete it and just forget it. All right. So that's pretty much how you, you know, take data from the Phantom X6 imported machine and then work it with it inside a machine. And so that's pretty much the tutorial. Hope you guys learned something and I'm going to go ahead and continue to work on this track. And like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching this tutorial. If you haven't already, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions, comments and need some help um, or if you want to see me do another video on something, I got more coming in the works in the near future. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification if you want to be notified right away. It's your boy Young Fizz, aka Mr. Dope Status on Instagram. And make sure y'all, you know, follow me there and we'll see you next time. It's your boy Young Fizz. Thank you for watching. We out.